All right, here with Christian Campbell. Uh, everyone has been asking for this interview. You've been flying up the, the system here in Boston. Are you surprising yourself at how well you performed at every single level? Or is it a mentality of, like, I expected this? I, I don't know how you could expect to be, like, hitting 400 with a 1,000 OPS, like, yeah. every level. Like, at some point, it has to be somewhat difficult, no? Yeah, it definitely gets harder the higher and higher. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it, it definitely does get harder. Uh, it definitely gets harder. Um, just try to stay consistent as possible, kind of going throughout the each level. And I'm just try to stay to my plan when I go up to bat and um, on defense and everything. So try to make the game easy for myself. But have you surprised yourself? Like, I feel like at every level you get promoted, it's like you must be like, all right, now it's AAA. This has got to be more difficult. And then you hit 400 with an OPS over 1,000. Are you, like, how do you prepare to show up every day thinking like, are, are, are you almost thinking like, where is the wall? Like, when do, I, when do I hit that adversity? Or are you just plowing right through it? Honestly, I try not to think about it too much, but um, it's definitely surprising. I mean, definitely from the beginning of the season, starting in Greenville, um, I didn't know what to really expect. I know what I've worked on in the offseason and tried to help me get ready for this season, and it's just really been working out for me. I mean, it's one of the things I really struggled with in the past, is just kind of hitting the ball in the air and trying to just get better results because I've always hit the ball kind of hard. It's just always been at the ground or like line drive. So once they kind of tweaked my swing a little bit and um, got me to hit the ball in the air, everything's just kind of changed. So you must be thinking to yourself, I, I, I'm targeting a job on opening day uh, next year. The fact that you're right-handed is a huge advantage because the Red Sox at the big league level, super left-handed, so you have a leg up there. And you can play just about any position. Where do you feel most comfortable, or is it just wherever you need me, that's where I'll play? It's really wherever you need me, I'll play. I feel pretty comfortable everywhere, but um, it's really just getting consistent work at each position because I don't want to go flat at any position I go to because I've been missing in some third base, shortstop. I was a second baseman in you're college. Center field the other night. Center field the other <laughs> night. Yeah, so like... I mean, most of my work this last like month's been a shortstop mainly, but um, I mixed in a game at third base. That was my third game at third base this whole year. So it's it's just trying to stay ready for whatever comes my way. One thing that that everyone saw from you coming out of out of Tech was your ability to identify pitches in the zone. And beginning of the year, you said they wanted you to lift it more. It slipped a little bit and then locked in. What is it about? your ability to, to see the ball at an elite level, at every level, college, Greenville, uh, Portland, in zone versus everyone else. Like, what, who, who, who taught you that? Like, was it yourself or was it a coach? Uh, like, how, how is it that you do that better than seemingly everyone else? It's just a God-given gift, I think. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you can – I don't no one really taught me that. <laughs> I've always kind of been like that when I was younger and everything, just uh, been able to see the pitch as well. That's always been my, like – plus ability like I can never really hit home runs until this year and um that must be nice yeah <laughs> so, like, so like it was kind of funny like I was just trying to work on that side of the ball more like because I've always had pretty good swing decisions and like try not to swing at balls most of the time and stuff it's just the lifting the ball and trying to hit it as hard as possible in the air that's why I really struggled and um we're just now getting that together yeah some of the the scouts who weren't sold on you quite yet were like it seems like he's going to swing at every single pitch yeah, what yeah. talk about that because I watch you and it's just like yeah he seems like he's just very active as opposed to other guys who are like I hey, just like me when I'm up there it's like oh that already passed me but yeah. who what is it about that part of it where you're just like yeah if I like it I'm swinging yeah I'm always ready to hit pretty much every pitch so like I kind of hit really athletically if that's a thing like maybe a little bit more than other people um but I'm always ready to hit usually every pitch I'm always Ready to swing. Yeah, why waste so. any of them? Yeah, I'm always ready to swing because the higher you go, the more they attack. Sure. So, like, you got to be ready to go because you're only going to get maybe like one or two pitches you can actually handle are sometimes. You, are you getting tired or do you love it that other highly respected prospects down here and, and former big leaguers are calling you Barry Bonds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of funny because uh, we were in the locker room in Portland and um, Cello started calling me it, and I didn't answer for the first couple of times because I didn't know what he was talking name, about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, Roman started calling me, and then KT started calling me it, and um, I started answering eventually, and I thought it was going to stay in the locker room. I didn't think it was actually going to sure. like get out to sure. everybody, but um, it got out, so everybody, yeah. yeah, so yeah, everybody starts coming. Yeah, everybody yeah. starts coming very yeah. Bonds, yeah. Well, well, speaking of those guys, I mean, it's it's been the big three for a long time. It's now the big four, potentially even five beyond that. 
we need to sneak you into some of these pictures. Like they're they're taking uh, these pictures yeah. together. It's like where where is Christian in these pictures? Are you, like does that is that something that uh, has crossed your mind at all about how this may be the most exciting time at least in the last decade uh, in terms of like the Red Sox prospects and fans being excited about the guys down here. Um, it's a really good thing everybody's excited about all of us down here, and um, it's a really exciting thing that's gonna happen soon, hopefully. So, I mean, I would take it as a big four, big five, whatever you guys want to call it. But like, um, they were they were the original big three. I feel like I just kind of came out of nowhere. So like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I feel like I wasn't really expected, and um. And um, I don't know. It'll, it'll play itself out. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You just gotta play get in the photos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Get, get in the photos. And if they're doing them, just be like in the background yeah, somewhere. Jump in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, might, I might just jump like in the yeah. back somewhere. That's just all like, you gotta do. I ask all, all the prospects this, but how much do you focus on the rankings? And it's okay to say you do. I feel like the answer is always like, nah, I mean, I'm just out here to play and show up to the ballpark. Like, do you focus on the top 100 at all? Um, I get texts to say congratulations and stuff like that, and that's when I usually figure out. Uh, that made it yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I always just keep in the back of my mind as quick as like you're on that is as quick as you can also lose it. So you just got to kind of keep going in a straight line. Over the off season and into spring training, I think as we all heard about these new swing mechanics you were kind of working on, people were kind of saying, you know, he doesn't exactly look like the type of hitter he was before. There was some more swing and miss in the past. Was there ever a moment of doubt when the Red Sox brought this new plan to you for how to go about things at the plate or like a moment where it locked in and you were like, oh, wow, like I'm a different hitter than I was before I got drafted? Yeah, um, definitely when I was in double, I feel like I was a different hitter than what I was in college. Um, kind of like back to what I was saying, my swing decisions and stuff were really good. So that was never really a problem. It was just trying to get the ball into the air. So like once I mix the two together, like and have that kind of perfect combination of walks, hitting the ball hard, not striking out a lot, then like it's really good. But like in the beginning, I feel like I struggled a little bit with swinging too hard and like missing the ball. And like in green, but a lot of strikeouts in the beginning, trying to find that happy medium of like, all right, am I going to hit the ball? Am I going to hit a home run? Like, what am I trying to do when I'm up here? Because I have a plan, but like, Sometimes it's hard to execute my plan of hitting the ball when I'm swinging really hard for the first time like this year. So just trying to find the happy medium and getting used to swinging as hard as I do. Um, it's like a good mix. I think I'm starting to find it like here and like in Portland. I think it was a little shaky and Greenville in the beginning, but um, yeah, it's coming along well. When it comes to kind of the mechanics at the plate, Everyone comps you to Hunter Pence. I feel like that's the one I see the most often. <laughs> Not that you take that in a bad way, but is there someone you're trying to chase with that swing? Or is it like, no, I kind of see what people are talking about? Um, I mean, I've definitely heard people say it's kind of weird a little bit sometimes. Um, I feel like it's the toe tap that's kind of weird. I don't think my swing's like bad or anything. I think it's just the beginning, kind of my timing. Your toe taps, my toe taps and my timing to like get on time with the pitcher and everybody usually does a leg kick or whatever so everybody has their own timing and that's always been my timing mechanisms my toe tap even when I was little that's always what I've done to toe tap so it's hard to change that um, but I worked on my swing so when I get my foot down and actually swing like good things happen but before that it might look a little weird I guess like <laughs> sometimes sometimes like sometimes it looks okay sometimes I might hey, look a little like working, wild man. sometimes uh, we, we talked about defensive positioning uh, earlier, but are, is, is it the same position in terms of what's the easiest for you, what's the most comfortable, and where do you prefer to play? Is that all the same position? Pretty much, yes, because I have even time in each position. So they try to work with me pretty much every spot in the infield. I haven't really played first base um, and then center field. I got time out there this year, so really just trying to get comfortable at each position. Um, Where are you most comfortable? Right now, I would say shortstop. I was I hoping you take second base. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I mean, I, I still love second base. Second base is still, I played that in college, so like I feel like I'm really. That's not. That's not. I feel like moving from second to short is bigger than moving from short to second. So, yeah. sure. so it's a little bit. I think it's a little bit easier to move from short to second. Yeah. And um, yeah. So. Right now, shortstop, because I've been playing that for like the last month and a half. So yeah, just so play long. second base. Just do more. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just yeah. going to throw in that. more second base. Yeah, I can, I I can play I can play a little second base. You know, they told me that I'll be there. So I just, I, you know, I just wait for my time to be there. Perfect. So that's really it. I know, Tyler, you have another one. Oh, you don't? I had, I had one more. I had oh, one I more. Um, how much do you guys watch the big league level? And maybe see, oh, I could, I could fit there. I could, like, obviously the second base thing. It's a joke, but it's not a joke. Like, if you know, next year happens, you're on this pace, you would be a candidate to play second base for the Boston Red Sox. Do you focus on that, or is it more just your typical? I got to handle every day as it comes. 
Yeah, you gotta handle every day as it comes because you never really know what's gonna happen in the future. All you can really do is just focus on the present. And we have a lot of prospects, a lot of players. You never really know what's gonna happen. Um, all you can really do is just continue to work hard and um, just focus on yourself and plan as good as you can where you are at the time. And um, when the time comes, you're hopefully at the end of the end of the, the day you see yourself in Boston. So they also everyone keeps talking about next year. This is a month and a half, month left. Do you do you have any anticipation of like, hey, if they give me the call in September, I'm ready to go? No, yeah, I would be definitely ready to go. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I would, I would, I would, I would, yeah, I would never be like, nah. No, 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 People are going to get called up. If you keep yeah. hitting, like Jared said, 1,000 OPS, they're going to consider it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just don't want to drive yourself crazy, though, like thinking, sure, like, I deserve, sure. yeah, I deserve yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. be somewhere that, you know, you just got to, like, kind of be where you are at the time. And, um, you know, just, just, it's true. You got, <laughs> you got, they got announced stories coming down tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah. Is there anything you want to ask someone like that who's been in the big leagues for a long yes. time, been a shortstop, yeah. been a second baseman? Yeah, honestly, how to play those positions. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, cause like, start. yeah, yeah. I know, I know how to play a little bit, but like, there's like little things that like I don't know yet. There's a lot of little things I don't know, and guys like that who've played for a long time and that know what they're actually doing. I don't know if you guys just watched me do shortstop out there, but that was tough. <laughs> what I did, that was tough. That was just tough. I was making a lot of mistakes, but I was trying to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Some of the stuff I've never really tried before. And, um, yeah, I will have, have a lot of questions for Story. Even before we got on here, you were talking about, you know, you redshirted. Was that 21 you redshirted or 22? 22. 22, okay. So your senior or your junior season, you didn't have that. So I got drafted as a sophomore. I sophomore. Sure, but I'm saying, I'm sorry, junior high school was 2020, right? I graduated in 21. So, yeah, junior, so you didn't even have your junior season. So developmental-wise, you're kind of like a year removed right I, like, yeah a lot of guys got affected so that probably affected you yeah, yeah i missed uh junior my junior season because of covid yeah right yeah so that's what i mean so like a lot of people not just you but there are a lot of prospects out there didn't get one huge year of development and now all of a sudden it's like oh yeah this guy just got to play more consistently and look what's happening barry bonds yeah. <laughs> uh is there a race you know with the big three it was always which one of those guys is going to get to the big leagues first do you kind of look at it and you're like hey i want to be the first name to get up out of the crew there or is it more like everyone's on their own pathway here and you're feeling it out everyone's definitely on their own path i would say but like i feel like it definitely could be a dark horse somewhere in that probably um we got a lot of talented guys solo Rome is different, just different. I, I really don't have anything to say about Roman. It's like kind of crazy. I don't, I don't know what else I could say about Roman. If you just watch him play, it's just kind of amazing what he's doing at 20 years old. Like I couldn't imagine, like. I like how you it. say 20. Like we're looking at you, like you're a kid, and you're like, look at this 20 year old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just, I just turned 22 like a month ago, but, oh, but geez, yeah, getting up there. But yeah, yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's just crazy. Like I don't know. KT too. He's really good. And he's young. He's my, my age. I think he's 22 also. So he's really good also. It's just it's just crazy to. It's really fun to be on a team like that with like all really talented guys that are around my age. And it's good to be in a mix with this locker room too because we got a lot of experience in this locker room. So they teach us a lot of things each day too. Last question for me: When you get the call, not if, when you get the call, who are you telling first? Who are you calling? I gotta call my parents. Yeah, I gotta call my parents, and I gotta tell my girlfriend. I know. Uh, <laughs> I have to. Yeah, you can yell that for that. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I'm going to big leagues. Parents, girlfriend. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say that. That'll be it. You were born in Tennessee, right? Yeah, I'm from originally Chattanooga, Tennessee. You know about Pigeon Forge, yeah, you Tennessee? Pigeon Forge? I've, I've heard, heard of that. It's got like the Titanic Museum and a big carnival. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, have you yeah, been there? Yeah, I think so when I was younger. I moved like after elementary school. So All right. We're amazing. asking everyone if we should go in the off season. So that's a, a yes. Rock yeah. said no. Uh, but he doesn't like fun stuff for yeah, the most yeah. part. You guys gonna be in Chattanooga? Like, Apparently they got like a King Kong and everything. It sounds awesome. Really? No, we'd be going specifically for Pigeon Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're just yeah. going to Pigeon Falls. They Ford. got you know Ruby Falls and like Rock Mountain and all that. I mean, I don't know if you guys like. No, we're just talking Forge. Just, just Forge. Just the Forge. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like doing the mountains strictly either. Pigeons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, strictly <laughs> pigeons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fun though. I've seen I've seen that all around when I was younger and stuff. It's, it'll be a good spot for sure. That's all right, cool. All right, cool. We so go. we're going to Pigeon Forge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christian Campbell, thank you so much for taking the time. Best of luck, and uh, we'll be watching every step of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it.